and uh, he was invited in Shabbat, and the rabbi in that shul told the rabbi in Israel, let me tell you something that happened in our community. There is a man that walks with, a, with his watch, and his watch has no battery. He's stuck in a certain hour. And he's already years with the same watch in his hand. So the rabbi asked him, what's the, what's the point? And he told him, listen, this guy said that this watch shows how much God loves him. And he explained, 2005, this fellow was a young guy, you know, he had to go for a special, I don't know, me, uh, <coughs> medicine treatment, I don't know exactly, to a certain, to a certain hospital, clinic. Every day, at the same time, he had to take, he had to take the train. So this UD took up the train, I don't remember which day it was, let's say Tuesday, and he took the train, and usually he had to be in, a, in the place around 9. So he was going, uh, let's say, an hour before. This time, he took the train earlier. He was in the train, and he looks that he have two more st uh, stations to get, two more stops to get to his uh, destination. He looks at his clock, and he says, "Oh, it's only 8:30. Wow, that's a fast uh, train. What I did today? You know what? Let me go down over here. There is a kosher area in this uh, in this uh, train stop. I'm gonna buy, you know, coffee and a cake and something, you know, to eat." To how about his breakfast? He went down. He went out from the from the uh, uh, subway station. Ten minutes later, he hears police ambulance. You know, Hobalagan coming up. If you remember, in London, I believe it was 2005. There was a terrible terrorist attack inside a train. He blew up the whole entire train. His wagon was the wagon where the terrorist was inside. So this guy said, Baruch Hashem, but I want to save my life. Save my life. You know, he put it inside my head to go to... Now, as you can imagine, all the, all the phones got shut, uh, uh, shut down. He wanted to call up his parents to, uh, to tell them that everything is fine. He decided that there is no way how to call them. He started to walk back. Finally got home. And his mother was... Just saw him. He ran. She ran. Anyway, they cried and everything. And then... <clears throat> she asked him, so what happened? You were supposed to be inside. She says, yes, mom. I was inside. I was inside. And unfortunately... Uh, and Baruch Hashem... Unfortunately, it got, it got exploded. But... Baruch Hashem, I was able to leave at the right time. I lived at 8.30 and it was Baruch Hashem the right moment. So what I mean? But the explosion was 8.50. <coughs> so no, it was 8.30. No, 8.50, look. And he started to watch the, the news, 8.50. And he realized that his clock got stopped at 8.30. And he didn't move anymore. So he was sure that it was 8.30 and he, thought, he was sure that it was uh, early. That's, that, that would make it, that, that's why he thought that it's the right moment to go down and take a breakfast. He says, from then, from there, I'm keeping this watch. Because sometimes I'm having this type of problems in the, the regular uh, uh, daily basis. And when I look at the watch at 8.30, I remember how much Borel them loves me. You know, I was like, throughout the miracles, small miracles I'm sorry, throughout the big miracles you're going to be able to see the small miracles as well so let me share with you the following idea this week's parasha parasha Baigash very interesting parasha we have Yehuda facing Yosef without knowing that it's him and being ready to give all what he have to save his brother Benjamin from the hands of, of the of the king of Mitzrayim. The Torah tells us 
that Yaakov Avinu had a fear after the whole story was over. And Baruch Hashem Yosef reveals himself and he spoke to his dad or he sent a message to his dad, come, come to Mitzrayim. The Torah tells us that Yaakov Avinu had a very big fear. The Torah says that Yaakov Avinu went, went to sleep and Bodeh Olam appears in his dream and he told him, don't worry. I'm going to go down with you together. And don't worry because I'm also going to pick you back. I'm going to take you out from Mitzrayim as well. And the Chachamim were asking, why do you have such a fear? Hanas, Baruch Hashem, Baruch is giving you the merit to have all your kids next to you. I was uh, speaking, talking with somebody last night and he told me, you don't understand that we have a Shidduch that just happened now and the father of the Hatan put as a condition before even dating with the girl that the condition is that if it's not Hashem that's going to work, she will commit herself to live next to the family of the boy. Yeah, very Syrian, uh, strong type of guy. Anyway, so imagine Yaakov Avinu is going to have all his family around him. Everybody, he's going to have Pardasa, he's going to have what he's scared about. But then the Mephashim are explaining very simply. And it says, Rabotai, Yaakov Avinu, he knew that he's going to have enough Pardasa and enough Olam Azim. And he knew also that Ami Senna was going to go up, out from Egypt like God promised to Abraham Avinu years before. They're going to go out. And they're going to be rich. So why are you, why are you scared for? Chachamim Yaakov Avinu was scared that maybe Ami Senna is going to go out. The question is how they're going to go out. Which type of level they're going to have? What's going to be their emunah in, in Akadosh Baruch Hu? How much of a connection they're going to have with Borei Olam and with uh, Judaism? That's why when Yaakov Avinu was killed, Borei Olam came down to him and he told him, Habib, don't worry. I'm going down with you and I'm taking you out. Like the Pesuk writes, Ashochen itam betoch tumotam. But Olam is standing right next to us, even though we are with a Tum'ah. There is a Gemara that in the rights, there was a Kofed, you know, it was a Kofed. A guy that an uh, atheist, he didn't believe in a Kadosh Baruch Hu. And he told the Rabbi, he said, Ah, you guys, you should know that God hates you. And hates us. And he mentioned a Pasuk. He says, yes, you're making Avirot. For sure God doesn't like you. He says, Habibi, you're wrong, because I'm going to give you another pasuk, the pasuk that I just mentioned, Ashokhen itan betoch tumotam. It doesn't matter how far can be a Jew, and how disconnected from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, but Olam is right next to him, waiting for him to make the small change and to help him out, to save him. I want to tell you, there was a rabbi, his name was Rabbi Karlibach. You heard about him? Karlibach. Karlibach. Shabbat Adam. Rabbi Karlibach says, the story that happened to him. It says that once he had to be in Texas. I don't know what, what happened in Texas. Exactly, he went to Texas. And there was one mikveh for men in Texas. So finally he reached to the mikveh, added Shabbat. A lot of people are going to mikveh. It's something good to do, not an obligation. He went. When he finished, he was leaving already the mikveh, and then he sees a huge jeep, you know, with a, such a such a powerful color, radish, and it, that stops at the entrance of the mikveh, and he sees a huge guy coming out, cowboy, with a you know, so much. Not the type you're gonna look for. Yeah, a boy. Give you a call. It's a cowboy. He wears like a cowboy, with a, with a hat, he acts like a cowboy, you know. And he sees that this guy goes out from the car, and he goes straight to the mikveh, not even thinking, goes straight to the mikveh. Rabbi was, uh, you know, 
Amazed? What's going on over here? He waited. He waited. And the, and the guy finishes the mikveh, he goes out, and the rabbi uh, stops him and they start talking. What's the story? What are you doing here? And listen up, what, what is the story behind it? I believe it. This you will be told Rabbi Khalid. I want to tell you something. I wasn't born here in Texas. I was born in Europe. And actually I was born like a Hasid Vizhnitz. Hmm. With peyot and with all the... And in Europe, the rabbi of Vizhnitz had a small Hasidut. It's not like today they have it. A small Hasidut. It's a group. It's a group of, of Hasidim the, around the rabbi. Anyway, every Friday after Arvid, we were going home, we were having our meal, and then the rabbi was making a dish. What's a dish? Food. It's a special, uh, you know, with uh, food, with uh, with uh, songs in the Torah, you know, the Hasidim were coming. Now, because the place was, was so little, and there were a lot of Hasidim, so I had a fixed spot. The fixed spot was right under the table, next to the rabbi. Under it. With me, there were other other boys, and every single Friday we were, we were sitting over there. It says the rabbi was giving a speech. What can I tell you? We were little kids, five years old, six years old. We don't understand the 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 dvar of the rabbi. But we were hearing, we were singing together with him. He knew that we were there. Sometimes he was taking some uh, food. food and he was giving us also. It says one time, <clears throat> like always, after the singing, the rabbi started this dinasha. Everybody was quiet. And then the rabbi started to speak slowly. It seems to be that he wanted us, also the kids, to hear what he was saying. And then he said, he said, let me tell you something. But the Olam will never forget about any Jew. doesn't matter where he, what war he's going to be. But let me tell you even more than that. The Yetzirah is a very smart guy. The Yetzirah knows that if you did Anavon, you did Avedah, automatically it puts in your head, you see, you're a shock. But the Olam doesn't like you. Look all that that you're doing. Forget about it. Don't even try to make a mitzvot because God doesn't like it. What are you trying to foolish God? You're trying to play games with Borei Olam? But then the rabbi quoted a pasuk and he said, that's wrong because Borei Olam have nothing to do with whatever is going to happen after and whatever happened before. What happened, happened. What's going to be, it's not, it's not here yet. Right now, you want to fulfill a mitzvah? You want to do a good action? Do it. And don't think, how, I'm, how, I'm, how do I dare to do a mitzvah knowing that I did an avirah before? <laughs> Rabotai, he says, the rabbi finishes Dvar Torah, and he looks behind the, the, the table, and he puts the hand, his hand on top of my head, and he told me, Tzadik, did you hear what I just said? And forget it. That always Borei Olam will look forward for your mitzvot. Rabbi, what can I tell you? My family left Europe two years later. And we came here down to Texas. My father, with the years, you know, Texas, not a community. We started to go down and down. I got a, a Goyish education totally. No, no Judaism, no nothing. Unfortunately, fortunately, he also got married to Aguya. Terrible. And you see, you see how, how do I look? But sometimes, I have this feeling that I want to fulfill a mitzvah. I have this, that I'm missing Borei Olam. I want to get closer, but I'm lost. I'm alone by myself. The only thing that I know that there is over here is a small shul with a small mikveh. I know that Shabbat, maybe it's too strong for me. 
But when I do, want to do a mitzvah, the Yitzhara comes up to me and tells me, You? Masha. You're going to do a mitzvah? Married to a goya? Acting like a goy? Your kids are going? You're going to do a mitzvah? And then I remember what the Rabbi told me years ago. And putting the hand in, on top of my head and telling me, Don't forget that Bore Olam is looking forward about every single good action that you're going to do. That's, that's what is giving me chizuk, and I'm ready to come to this mikveh without thinking about the bad things that I do, without thinking what's going to be after. Right now I'm fulfilling a mitzvah and I want to get connected to Bore Olam. Rabotai, that's exactly what's the fear of Yaakov Avinu, and that was the answer of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Anochi Yered, I'm going to go down together with you, and I'm going to take you down from this to ah, from whatever you're holding so low, don't forget that I'm right next to you, and I'm going to save you as well. <laughs>